and we're live. You're a little early. You got to wait for the ding. That's okay. Common isotope pairs. This is the information that I'm going to require you to know on your test, except I gave you a green formula data sheet. Remember that green sheet that I gave you a couple of days ago? You might want to get that out because this has that information on it. If you don't have that green sheet, I do have extras. If you need an extra green sheet, come grab one. We'll put it right here. How about? Accidentally photocopy twice as many as we need. Hello, my angel. Glad you made it. Continue. So we have uh, the common isotope pairs. Uh, I have a copy of it here. Let's get it in front so we can look. Radiation. Uh, chapter 7. I saw a data sheet where it is. Right there. <coughs> Carbon-14 decays into nitrogen-14. How long does it take for half of the carbon-14 to become nitrogen-14? About 5,730 years, give or take. Uh, uranium-235 turns into lead-207. That takes 710 million years. Potassium-40 turns into argon-40. This takes 1.3 billion years. This one here is what helps us figure out the age of the Earth. This first one is what helps us figure out the age of things that used to be living up to about 50,000 years ago or so. Past that, it becomes very, very inaccurate. Right? Okay. Let's continue with the notes then. So, some terminology. The isotope that, okay, that undergoes radioactive decay is called the parent isotope. In your chart, this first column, those are the parent isotopes. Those are where we're starting it. And you can see from the chart, what do we call the product after radioactive decay? The daughter. While the product is called the daughter isotope. So if you get into geology, you'll learn about the potassium-40 clock. Potassium-40 decays. So not all clocks have hands. Anything that can measure the passage of time can be a clock. Potassium-40 decays to form argon-40. And argon-40 has a half-life of 1.3 billion years. Sorry, potassium-40 has a half-life of 1.3 billion years. So this is how we can use this to figure out how old something is. When rock turns to lava, all the gases, including argon-40, because argon-40 is a gas, they are released. They bubble out. And that resets the clock back to zero. After rock has been lava, it has no more argon-40 in it. It still does have potassium-40, though, Hayden, because potassium-40 is a solid. It was melted with the lava. When the rock cools, the potassium-40 decays. into argon-40. And if we measure the amount of argon-40 compared to the amount of potassium-40, we can tell how old the rock is since it cooled. Doesn't necessarily tell us how old the rock is overall, but it tells us how long it's been since it melted. That's pretty good. I, I wrote down an example. We're going to come back to it. This isn't in your notes. You'll write it down in a second. But uh, look at this. Here's your potassium-40 clock. So the parent is the blue graph. Originally, you start out with 100% potassium-40 and no argon, the melted rock. Thank you. You really want to come to st spend some quality time with me. So we have uh, 
no argon at all, but as the potassium decays, as there's less and less potassium, what do you notice happens with the argon? There's what? More and more. Okay? And if you know how much of one, you can figure out how much of the other. What was the half-life of potassium-40? How many years? After 1.3 billion years, you've got a 50-50 mix. If we started out with one kilogram, we would have 500 grams of each. Another half-life, 2.6 billion years. Now we have half as much potassium, only 25%. The rest must be argon. So if 25% or 250 grams are potassium, and we started out with 1,000 or grams or 100%, how much must be argon? 75% or 750 grams. You can read it as a percentage or you can read it as a weight. Another 1.3 billion years. Do they have the, uh, another, uh, your third half-life? Now you have 12.5%, 125 grams, if we're starting with a kilogram, 875 grams of argon-40. So you can use this as a clock. After the first half-life, you have a one-to-one -one ratio. After the second half-life, you have a one to three ratio. You have three times as much of the new substance as the old substance. After the third half-life, <coughs> you have a 875 divided by 125. You have a one to seven ratio. And you can use that then to figure out how far along you are in this clock. Let's try a couple. So this example you have to write out. Sorry, I added this afterwards. So on the previous page, you got room there? Yes, a big blank section. Example, a 150 gram sample of a radioactive isotope decayed to 9.375 grams in 40 years. A asks, what's the half-life of the isotope? You probably want to, for the next couple of days and for the test, bring a calculator unless you're very good at dividing by two with decimals in your head. For now, I'll put my calculator up on the main screen and I'll show you how we calculate it and we'll write that down and that way when you have a calculator you can do it. If you have a calculator here, great. How much did we start with? 150. How much did we end with? 9.375. I need to figure out how many half-lifes that was. So here is half-life number one. How much would I have left after one half-life if I started out with 150 grams? Hopefully this one you can do in your head. If I start it with 150 grams and half of it's decayed, what's left? 75. That's the first half-life. Have we reached 9.375 yet? No? Keep going. Here's the second half-life. How much do I have left? 37.5? How'd you get that? You're dividing by two or timesing by a half. It's easier to divide by two. So we got that much. Have we reached our end point yet? That's 37.5 for those of you who are trying to read my writing. Have we reached our end point yet? No? Keep going. Half-life number three. <coughs> How much would I have left after half-life number three? Sorry? 18.75? 18, 18, 18, Mr. Duick. And my three isn't lining up very well, is it? Are we there yet? Okay. Half life number four. And I think half life number four is where we end up. Yes? It looks like it takes four half-lifes to end up 
at 9.375 grams. How many years? What did the question say? 40, 40 years, four half-lifes. How long must each half-life be if it took 40 years to fit in four half-lifes? Ty? 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Total time, 40 years, four half-lifes, so half-life equals 10 years. <laughs> Looks like every 10 years, and I made up nice round numbers. In real life, Sarah, the numbers are yuckier, but I wanted to do numbers that we could do in our head. Uh, it, it looks like every 10 years, this particular element decays by 50%. It's got a half-life of 10 years. Okay. So, how much would remain after 10 years then? If we started out with 150 grams, how much would remain after 10 years? 75 grams, yep. How much would remain after 50 years? I would take that 9.375 and I would divide it by two. The tricky part is, what if I said, how much would remain after 33 years? Okay, if you don't have a nice round half-life number, if you don't have a multiple of a half-life, you need some funky math, you need to graph it and then use a computer and use logarithms and stuff like that. You're not gonna be expected to do that, although you may look at it in Math 12. In, in fact, in Math 12, we do look at half-life. We look at it properly. But you need more math skills than you currently have. Okay? Homework. If you haven't done this already, you'll get a chance to work on this a bit later on. I'm going to give you this right now, but you can temporarily put it aside. We're going to be doing a lab that's going to take about a half an hour, and then you can start section 7.2, and on page 311, you can start working on those, but those you'll get time to work on on Monday. So I'm going to give you the section 7.2 homework first, tuck it aside, and then I'm going to give you the lab handout.